Okay, yes, Maharaj is here. So we like to welcome His Holiness uh, Bhakti Vikna Vinas and Narasimha Swami Maharaj. Mm. Krishna, thank you so much, Maharaj, for accepting these invitations. So I like to introduce about Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj was initiated by Sila Prabhupada in London, 1971. A year later, he received the second initiation. He has been preaching for over last uh, 40 years in Asian countries such as India, Philippines, China, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Thailand. Through his year of preaching, he has been countlessly, uh, 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 countlessly uh, practically guidance for the soul and inspire them. And Maharaj takes in Mayapur 1994 from His Holiness Tamar Krishna Goswami Maharaj. And Maharaj always been strict in his sadhana. Whoever get to know Maharaj, admire and respect his sincere and faithful practice of chanting the holy name of the Lord. He truly, he truly walked his talk. Maharaj has been teaching with MI since its inception. So we really uh, fortunate to have Maharaj for with us today to teaching this Isopanisha. So without a further ado, I like to Welcome, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yes. Om Makyana Timaranda Sia, Gyanan Militanyena, Tasma Shri Garabe Namaha, Vanchakau Patarubyas Jaya, Kripa Sindhu Patita nam pavani bio vaishnavibyo namo namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Hare Rama, Rama. Yes, Hare Krishna. Okay, Prabhu, I think you're going to have to mute everyone. Yes, Maharaj. I'm doing that, Maharaj. Yeah. So, Maharaj, yeah, we have uh, Pujita Mataji say, who, uh, the co uh, who uh, will be with you, Maharaj, to mute the participants. And to who? assist you, Maharaj, who's, for the first Pujita Mataji. Pujita. Uh, Pujita Mataji. In, uh, yes, Pujita. Pujita. So they are, uh, they'll be under the IIC Bhakti Sastri in it too, Maharaj. So they'll be uh, in that name. Okay. So, you know, we definitely... I don't want a lot of disturbance, you know, but if we can mute everybody, it will make it a lot easier for me. Okay. Ma Maharaj, please, please excuse me, Maharaj. I have uh, other batch, Tamil batch to teach. With your permission, okay. can I uh, leave, Maharaj? Yeah, yeah, you go ahead, Prabhu. Thank you so yeah. much, Maharaj. Yeah, okay. thank you so much. All right. How many people are in the class, Manaji? Uh, about 25 students. 20, 25 students. Okay. There'll be All more right. joining. Huh? There will be a few more joining. Maharaj. Oh, look. There'll be a few more joining. Yeah. All right. So anyway, we're going to begin the Ishopanishad here. And you can see, I uh, want to bring some to your attention that this Ishopanishad also is subtitled. If you look at the cover page, is it, uh, just below Sri Ishopanishad, Prabh Prabhupada has put, the knowledge that brings one nearer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. So this is the idea of the Sri Ishopanishad. It doesn't directly mention Krishna's name, but it brings us nearer to understanding Lord Krishna without directly mentioning his name. All right, and then 
but today we're going to look at the introduction. Hopefully we can get through the introduction today. The introduction is a lecture uh, given by Srila Prabhupada in London in the Conway Hall. And it's uh, very nice. Uh, the devotees actually arranged one week of lectures every night. For a week, Prabhupada went to the Conway Hall and gave lectures on different topics. And one of the lectures was teachings of the Vedas. So it's appropriate for this book, this uh, Sri Ishopanishad. Mm. We'll be hearing more. We want to. Uh, and, oh, uh, uh, maybe I I have some. Uh, I have some text from the Back to Godhead magazine. Uh, one uh, very nice, very qualified devotee named Satyaraj Prabhu. He wrote an article about the Sri Ishopanishad, and he described how important it is, the significance of the Sri Ishopanishad, and why Prabhupada translated it. Of course, Prabhupada did this translation even before he went to America, and he had published this uh, purports to the different mantras. He published it in his newspaper, in the Back to Godhead magazine, which he was publishing. And when he came to America, then he told the devotees about it and told the devotees that they could collect the articles together and print a book. So the devotees did that. So the Ishopanishad was uh, one of the very first books which we had in our movement. And it's, it's very important uh, because Vedic knowledge, well, you see, when, when I... When I pass the article, I guess I'll pass. I won't be able to pass it right away because um, oh, I'll, I'll try. Let me see. I mean, that the what Mudli Darsham has to give me his email, or m maybe Mariji, you're in charge of the group. You can give me your email. Yes. Mataji? Um, uh, Maharaj, you can give it to me. I will put my email in the chat. Maharaj. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not getting the chat. Are you putting it? Uh, yeah, you anyway. You get my you can get from Prabhu there, you can get my contact and send me send me your e email or his email and then I'll send you this handout where you can post it to all the devotees. Okay. Maharaj, I will do that. Right. All right. Anyway, it tells about the significance of the Ishopanishad and why it's important. All right. So here today we're looking at the introduction, Prabhupada's lecture, teaching of the Vedas. And Prabhupada talks, what are the Vedas? Right. I'm not going to read it all. You can read it for yourselves, but we'll, we'll go through the main points. And Prabhupada explains how Veda means knowledge. Any knowledge you accept is Veda. And the teachings of the Vedas are the original knowledge. The Vedic knowledge, the Vedic reference means the Shruti, right? The Shruti, the hearing process. Bhagavad Gita is Smriti. Srimad Bhagavatam is Smriti. Puranas are all Smriti. But the four Vedas are Sruti, and the Upanishads are part of the four Vedas. And here we have Ishopanishad. Ishopanishad is in the Yajur Vedas, from the Yajur Veda, right? The four Vedas, the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, Natarva Veda. Originally, there was one Veda. It got divided into four by Vyasadeva. But originally, the Vedic knowledge comes from Lord Krishna. Tene Brahma Ridaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yatsuraya. The Vedic knowledge was imparted into the heart of Lord Brahma. So, like this, uh, Vedic knowledge was given to Lord Brahma. And it was, 
it's eternal knowledge and we accept this Vedic knowledge as being infallible. So Prabhupada begins his lecture talking about what is the difference between a conditioned soul and a liberated soul. It's an important point, the conditioned soul and the liberated soul. And Prabhupada's a conditioned soul has four kinds of defects. And then he talks about the four defects, and this is important. This is something you all must know. I'm sure it will be asked in the, in the closed book test about what are these four defects. I don't make up the paper myself, but I'm sure it must be there. Anyway, the four defects are mentioned. First defect, make mistakes. And Prabhupada gives the example, Mahatma Gandhi. He made the mistake. People told him, your life is in danger. He didn't pay attention and he got killed, murdered, assassinated. And then other, Prabhupada talks about other people like President Kennedy. They told Kennedy, you know, he was riding in the open car and they told him very dangerous, Dallas, Texas, very dangerous. People were against Kennedy. He got murdered. So then he made the mistake. So this is one defect of the conditioned soul, that we make mistakes, right? And then a second defect, illusion. You can understand how, how, how conditioned it, how difficult it is to get out of conditioning. We're so illusioned. And what is the big illusion? The illusion is to think I am the body. Right? We're thinking I'm the body, I'm a rich man, I'm a young man, or I'm an old man. We're thinking like that. So this is maya or illusion. So this is another defect. And then the third defect, the cheating propensity. Sometimes Prabhupada would say, there's only two kinds of people. There's the cheaters and the cheated. So a lot of cheating going on. So the, the tendency to cheat is there in the material world. People like to cheat. There's so many crimes going on, so much stealing, cheating. You know, people, even you think someone is your best friend and they take all your money from you. That's so common these days. You think you can trust someone, you give them money and they, they, they just disappear or they go off with it. So this cheating propensity is very common. So this... This goes on in many different fields. Sometimes people write books of philosophy, but it's defective. So this is cheating, imperfect philosophy. And then the fourth defect, the last one, the imperfect senses. So Prabhupada gives the example, he says, can you show me God? But we ask, do you have the eyes to see God? You'll never see God if you haven't got the eyes. And then if the light goes out, we cannot see in the dark. The cats can see in the dark. We cannot see in the dark. So, the, it shows our senses are not perfect. Sometimes we look up at the sun, and you look up at the sun, and the sun looks about the size of a coin. But of course, the sun is huge. It's a whole planet. But because it's up in the sky, it's far away. It appears to be small. 
so we have imperfect senses. There's even a well-known illustration, an illustration of an, a woman. And the woman, if you look at one way, the woman, you see a young woman. And if you look at the picture another way, you see an old woman. So different ways of looking at a this, this is a, due to our senses. So four different defects are there. And then Prabhupada talks about being Hindu. He said, you may call the Vedas Hindu, but he said Hindu is a foreign name. We are not Hindus. And the word Hindu, is it, it's not in the Vedas. The word Hindu comes from the people who, they, 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 in, in that region, in the region of the river Indus, and they used to refer to the people on the other side of the Indus River as the Hindus. So that was the origin of the word Hindu. It had nothing to do with philosophy. It's not in the Shastra. But, so what is our actual religion? Prabhupada says our real identification is Varnashrama. Varnashrama denotes the followers of the Vedas, you know, people who follow the Vedas. Then they will accept these different divisions of society. The four Varnas, meaning Brahman, Kshatri, Vaishya, Sudra, and the four ashrams, sannyasi, vanaprastha, grihastha, and brahmachari. So these four divisions of society and four divisions of spiritual life, they make up what is varnashram. And Prabhupada said these divisions are everywhere. And it, and it, it's a creation. It's not man's creation. It's the creation of God himself. God created these divisions. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, Chatur Vanam Maya Shristam Gunakarma Vibhagasha. I created these divisions. Maya Shristam, I created them. So, uh, Everywhere you'll see there are an intelligent class of men, like the brahmanas. You'll see there's the administrative people, like the kshatriyas. And then you have the merc mercantile people, or the business people, the vaishyas. And you have also the sudra, the worker, the laborers. So these are the four different divisions. Now, of course, these four divisions are supposed to be by guna and karma. Krishna says, chatur varna maya system, guna karma vibhag. By guna and by karma, not by birth. People, so often in the Vedic, in the Hindu society, the Hindus, they think everything is depending on birth. They think somebody's by birth is a Brahman. By birth, they're a Vaishnava. They even think by birth you can be a Vaishnava. Of course, it's not just birth alone, but you have to have the qualities. And so Prabhupada gives some nice examples, which we should note, bring to your attention. Uh, it, said, it said, you'll find there's a Vedic injunction that if you touch stool, then you have to take a bath immediately. But in another place, it's said that the stool of a cow is pure. And Prabhupada describes, if you can, you can take cow dung and put it on an impure place, and the place will become pure. So with our ordinary senses, we may say, well, this is a contradiction. You're saying the cow dung is impure, and now you're saying it's pure. But you have to understand it's the nature of cow dung. It doesn't apply to any other dung. 
somebody you probably you may you may say, Oh, I'm a Brahmana, so the stool of the Brahmana must be better than the stool of the cow. <laughs> no, of course not. The stool of the Brahmana is also contaminated. But the stool of the cow that is antiseptic. And it's very uh, purify, purifies it. And just like if you have a new temple or a new house, you can put cow dung everywhere and purify the place. So this is the Vedic instruction. This is the Vedic law. The cow dung itself is pure, but stool, of course, is not pure. And that's the Prabhupada said that in Kaukara, a very prominent scientist analyzed cow dung and found it contains all antiseptic properties. So Prabhupada talks about how if, if you quote the Vedas, nobody can argue. You have to accept the Vedas as true. And if you study what these injunctions are, you will find that they are all correct. Everything in the Vedas is correct. It's absolute knowledge. You know, things we study go out of date, but the Vedic knowledge is eternal. So Prabhupada says, Vedic knowledge is not coming from any ordinary man. The Vedic knowledge comes from the spiritual world, from Lord Krishna. And then Prabhupada said, it tells us how another name for Vedas is Shruti. Shruti means the hearing process. Knowledge we get from hearing. So Shruti is considered to be like a mother. The mother is one who tells us everything about the father. We want to know about our father, we ask our mother. The same way we want to know about the father of the whole creation, we ask the Vedas. From the Vedas we can find out about God the Father. And Prabhupada gives an example. He says, uh, if you want to know who your father is, you can go to everybody and ask them, are you my father? Are you my father? But the easiest way to do it is to go to your mother. Mother can immediately tell you who is your father. You try to find out your father on your own way, you may never find out your father. But take advent, take the help of the mother. So in the same way, take the help of the scriptures. And in this way, you can learn everything. Prabhupada said, if you want to know something beyond your experience, beyond your experimental knowledge, beyond the activities of the senses, then you have to accept the Vedas. You can't argue. Okay, the, so the Vedas are considered the, the, the mother. And Brahma, <laughs> Prabhupada said, Lord Brahma is the grandfather, the forefather. Brahma is, we said he was the first one to get the Vedic knowledge. The Lord put it into his heart, the beginning of the creation. And then Lord Brahma passed the, the knowledge on, came to Narada, Narada gave knowledge to Vyas, Narada's guru of Vyas. So in this way, the Vedic knowledge is understood. Uh, Prabhupada again talks about the mother. You have to ask your mother to find out who is your father. And then Prabhupada then goes on to talk about three different kinds of evidence. 
three kinds of evidence is also an important point here, which often comes up. What are the three kinds of evidence? And Prabhupada uses the Sanskrit terms, Pratyaksha, Anumana, and Shabda. So Pratyaksha referring to the senses, direct perception, direct evidence. So it's not, you just depend on the senses. You can't expect to get, we said imperfect senses, right? One of the defects of conditioned souls is imperfect sense. Here, one of the sources of evidence, however, is pratyaksha. We have knowledge acquiring senses. From the Bhagavad Gita, we learn we have five knowledge acquiring senses. The tongue, the eyes, the nose, the ears, and the skin. These are all the knowledge acquiring senses. So we get knowledge. This is what pratyaksha is one source of knowledge. And then another source of knowledge is anumana. Anumana means inductive knowledge. Prabhupada gives the example. It says, oh, it may be like this, it may be like that. Prabhupada is quoting these things. And he says, just like Darwin's theory. Darwin's theory. It's a theory. In other words, there's no proof to support it. But it's a theory. Theory means it may be like this. It may be like that. We don't know exactly. But it's a, it's a suggestion. that It's a possibility. It could be like this. So theory. So Anuman is like that, dealing with coming up with different theories. You may come up with one theory and then someone else comes up with another theory and defeats your theory. Hmm. But if you have, Prabhupada gives a nice example. He said, if you receive the knowledge from the authoritative source, that is perfect. And he gives the example. He said, just like the radio station. You want to find out what's the program, so you get the program guide. If you've got the program guide from the radio station, then you know what programs are going on. You know what time the programs are, right? Because you've got the authorized program. So similarly, we, we should get knowledge from the authorized sources. So then Prabhupada said, Vedic knowledge is called Shabda Praman. <laughs> and then Prabhupada talking more again, he says, again he mentions Shruti. <laughs> mentioned before he was saying it's like mother. But here he's giving a different interpretation, a different understanding. He said, Shruti means that knowledge which has to be received simply by oral reception. In other words, you have to hear it. The Vedas instruct us to receive transcendental knowledge. We have to hear from the authority. And Prabhupada talks about the universe. We cannot go beyond the universe. How do we hear? Well, well, we get we hear about things beyond the universe. We cannot go to the end of the universe, but we can hear about it from others. We get information. And similarly, there's a spiritual sky, there's a spiritual world. We cannot go there immediately, but we can hear about it. We hear about it. It's described for us. All of these things are described for us in the scriptures. The Vedas are there describing everything. We can hear about the higher planets and then above, 
above Brahma, above the higher planets, and there's four other planets. You have, uh, uh, yeah, you have Tapaloka and Janaloka, Maharloka, Satyaloka, the planet of Lord Brahma at the very top of the universe. And those four planets there above the heavenly planets where the demigods are residing. And below the demigods, then you have Bhuva Loka. And then below Bhuva Loka, then you come to Bhu Loka and you come to Earth. Right? So we get information about all the different planets in the universe from the Vedas. So then Srila Prabhupada talks about the Vedantis. <laughs> right? People who follow the Vedas, they're known as Vedantis. And of course, the, these Vedantis usually they're led by Shankaracharya. But then Prabhupada said there's another class of transcendentalists who are Vaishnavas. And he mentions the Acharyas of the Vaishnava Sampradaya, Ramanuja, Madhva, Vishnu Swami, and of course Nimbarka could also be there. And Prabhupada says both the Shankara Sampradaya and the Vaishnava Sampradayas have accepted Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Prabhupada makes this quotation here. He said Shankaracharya is supposed to be an impersonalist. But he, Prabhupada says Shankaracharya is a covered personalist. And he quotes his Bhagavad Gita commentary. And in the commentary of Shankaracharya, he has said, Narayana Parobhyakta, that Lord Narayan is beyond the cosmic manifestation. And then again, he confirmed, Lord Narayan is Krishna, and he has come as the son of Devaki and Vasudev. So he is recognized, Shankaracharya is recognizing Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And there's no doubt about the source of knowledge in Krishna consciousness. So we see different sources of knowledge, Pradyaksha, Anuman, and Shabda. And Shabda is the, the real source. Right, the source of knowledge in Krishna consciousness is the Bhagavad Gita, which comes directly from Krishna. Actually, we talked about hearing, so hearing, we're hearing from Krishna, so we're appreciating how the absolute truth is given to us by Lord Krishna. And Prabhupada talks how we have published the Bhagavad Gita because it's Lord Krishna's words and he is speaking the absolute truth. He's giving the truth without any interpretation. Prabhupada said that is real Vedic knowledge. Whatever Krishna says, that we accept. All right, and then next point, Prabhupada talks about different processes of receiving knowledge. One is ascending and the other is descending. So the descending process means you accept the, what is told to us from above. The people above us, they will pass the knowledge down to us. So that is de deductive. And inductive is where you try to pull yourself up to understand the absolute truth.
Prabhupada again talks about understanding this man is mortal. He says, deduction, deductive, this man is mortal. Your father says man is mortal. Your sister says man is mortal. Everyone says man is mortal. But you do not but you do not experiment. You accept it as a fact that man is mortal. So that is deductive knowledge. If you want to research, find out, you have to do so many things. You may think that there may be some man who is not dying, but you have not seen him yet. So in this way, you may research will never be finished. Your research will never be finished. So that is the ascending process. Aroha. Aroha Panta. The ascending process. To try to find out, is man mortal? Is there any man who never died? So if we want to accept, if we want to get proper knowledge, by our own endeavor, then it would be very difficult. It's not possible. You'll never come to the right conclusion. But if we hear, take the knowledge as it's coming down, deductive, passed down by deduction, that is proper knowledge. Then Prabhupada gives the quote from the Brahma Samhita, just like an airplane may run at the speed of the mind. How fast a mind can run. So fast a mind can run. Thousands of miles. So the mind can fa go faster than that. You immediately think of the moon, your mind can be at the moon. Why? Right? That's the speed of the mind. And so you can move like that at the speed of the mind. So the Vedic injunction is that we must approach the spiritual teacher. We have to have a spiritual teacher. And what is the qualification? The qualification is that he has heard the message from the right source. And he must practically be also established in Brahman. These are the two qualities he must have. Otherwise, he's not bona fide. So important points here. Note that the two qualifications of the spiritual master. One is that he knows that he's heard the Vedic knowledge. And the second thing is he is fixed in Brahman. In other words, Brahmanishta. He's fixed in Brahman. He, he, he is established in the Brahman. So that is the bona fide spiritual teacher. You have to find out that person. So then Prabhupada continues talking about Krishna consciousness movement. Said it's completely authorized according to the Vedas. The aim of Vedic knowledge is to find out Krishna. And Krishna has many forms, innumerable forms, but they're all one. They're not like our forms. Our forms are fallible. In other words, they well, they can fall down. Our forms, we can fall down. We fall. We, we go off track. But the Lord's form is infallible. There's no defect. We are very full of defects. But the Lord's form is without any defect. And Prophet said, my form has a beginning. But his form is no beginning. Our bodies, we take birth. And his body, he, the Lord, he is an eternal form. His form 
is not of this material world. So it has no end. And Prabhupada talks about the nature of the Lord, his transcendental body. We've seen pictures of Krishna. He never grows old, even though he's a grandfather with grandchildren, but he still looks like a young boy. So God never grows old. This is his supreme power. But if you want to search out Krishna by studying the Vedas, then it will be difficult. Right? And it says, Vedeshu Durlabam Adurlabam Atmabhatu. It's very difficult to know Krishna from the Vedas. But you can easily know the Lord from his devotee, from the bona fide devotee. He can deliver to you. And then Prabhupada talks about the Vedas. Originally, there's only one Veda. Uh, maybe before we go on, we'll, uh, are there any questions just now, so far? Anyone? Everyone's okay with what I'm doing? Is it all right? Are you keeping up with me? Yes, I'm not going, yes, no, not, yes. not going too fast. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. All right. I'm just, okay, taking you through, just taking you through the main points here in Prabhupada's lecture. Many, you can see many different points being brought up. All right, so Prabhupada right. said, uh huh. Raj, you were talking about the article, right? The article that you want me to share. Um, yeah, yeah. Is, is um, this the article I'm sharing my screen now? Is this the article? Oh, yeah, that's it. Have you got it? Oh, they put it in the handbook, right? Um, yeah, that's it. This so is it's the one? already in the handbook. Yeah, I had given it to a tool, Krishna Prabhu, to go into the handbook. Yeah, that's it. So everyone can read that article. And I, I think it would... it. Maharaj, I will share it in the WhatsApp group that we have for this Bhakti Shashri. Okay. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I I I've given it to the to the uh, devotees in the MI, told them to put the, and they put it in the handbook. Very nice. It's from back to Godhead. Yeah. Hare Krishna, just a small question. In the beginning, you mentioned the difference between Sruti and Smriti, and you give the reference of the three Upanishad. Can you explain quickly uh, uh, the difference between the two, Maharaj? Well, the Sruti, we said it's the four Vedas. It's just the original Veda. Okay. That is the Sruti. It's only the four Vedas. Nothing else. And all the other scriptures, like the Puranas and the Mahabharata and Ramayana, they're all Smriti. The Shruti, Prabhupada explains, he says, we are just like the mother, it's the hearing. You, 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 the, we hear from the mother. But the Smriti is like a sister. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's the remembering process. Smriti is more remembering. So the, the, if it's not four Vedas, then it's not Shruti. The four Vedas. And within the Vedas, the Upanishads are there. The Upanishads are part of the four Vedas. Just like Ishopanishad is from Yajur Veda. Oh, from, from which Veda? Yajur. This oh, is from the Yajur, Yajur Veda. Hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Okay. All right, so Prabhupada's bringing up now about the the Vedas here. Uh, no, it's the only one Veda, and there was no necessity of reading it. <laughs> People were so intelligent. Their memories were so good. And they would just simply hear 
and they would under they would remember everything <laughs> and they would he said they would grasp the whole subject matter so that was 5000 years ago but with the beginning of kali yuga they had to put the vedas into writing previously it was never written it was just spoken but then with kali yuga because the influence of the age of kali the vedas were put into writing uh, so that people in the kali yuga could they could benefit from them okay and so then he says uh, he divided the Vedas into four and then he gave the, the charge of these Vedas to his different disciples. And then through uh, and then uh, his less in for the less intelligent class of people he uh, constant he, he wrote different scriptures for them the different classes of the vedas are meant for the brahmanas you see the brahmanas were they would the ones they would read the vedas and on, without being a brahmana you have no we had no right to the vedas it's only for the brahmanical class of people so the lower class of people striya i mean the women sudra Vaishya, the Dvija Bandhu, those who may be Brahmanas by birth, but they don't have Brahmanical qualities. So these people, they are given other scriptures. For these persons, Srila Vyasadeva wrote Mahabharat, the Mahabharat, and of course Bhagavad Gita is there in the Mahabharat. So, Srila, as it Prabhupada explains, Srila Vyasadeva summarized all the Vedic knowledge and he put that into the Vedanta Sutra. And people are very fond of reading Vedanta Sutra. And we also, we have our commentary on the Vedanta Sutra, which is Srimad Bhagavatam. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the, the, the natural commentary. It's written by Srila Vyasadeva. Srila Vyasadeva wrote the Vedanta Sutra. He compiled the Vedanta Sutra. And then he also compiled Srimad Bhagavatam. So we read the Srimad Bhagavatam. It was a favorite of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Srila Prabhupada dedicated himself to writing also. Srimad Bhagavatam. Writing his commentary, anyway. So that, then Prabhupada talks a, a little bit about the Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, that's a long story. <laughs> Vedic Vyas was not very satisfied with writing all of his books. They wrote the Puranas and so many different books. The Vedanta Sutra, he wrote. Mahabharata, he wrote. He was not satisfied. And then he got Narada Muni's mercy. And Narada Muni instructed him, because you have not properly glorified the process of devotional service. So you have to do that. The whole purpose of the Vedic knowledge is to know, to know Krishna. If you don't know Krishna, then all of that knowledge, whatever you have, is just useless. Useless knowledge without knowledge of Krishna. So Prabhupada quotes the Bhagavad Gita there. All right. So, Vedanta Krit Veda Ved Eva Chaham. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. I am the compiler. I compiled the Vedanta Sutra. And I am the knower of the Vedas. So the Vedic knowledge is given to us by the grace of Srila Vyasadeva. And Srila Vyasadeva is empowered by Lord Krishna. 
to present all of this knowledge. And the object of all that knowledge is to know Krishna. We have to know Krishna. So Prabhupada talks about the Gaudiya Vaishnavas and how we, we have our own commentary on the Vedanta Sutra and it's given by Valadeva Vidya Bhusan. And the, the other Acharyas, they all have their own commentary on Vedanta Sutra. The Ramanuja Vaishnavas, they have a commentary. And the Madhvas, they have a commentary. Nimbarka also has a commentary on Vedanta. Even, Shank of course, Shankaracharya, because he was first, he came before the Vaishnava Acharya, so his commentary on Vedanta Sutra is very famous. And we should note also, Shankaracharya also has a parampara, they have their own disciplic succession. But it's Mayavada, it's not Vaishnava. Uh, and Prabhupada explains, he said, because the, the, the Shankaracharya came first, so his commentary is generally what people accept as being the commentary on Vedanta Sutra. But Prabhupada explains, he said, the other Vaishnava Acharyas, he said, their commentaries are bona fide, their commentaries are the Vaishnava commentary on Vedanta Sutra. And so we don't just only go to Shankaracharya and hear Shankaracharya's Vedanta Sutra. That will not do us any good at all. That won't help us as being devotees. And then Prabhupada talks about the Srimad Bhagavatam. That's uh, the last word in the Vedic knowledge. Oh, and how the Srimad Bhagavatam begins with the first words of the Vedanta Sutra. Just as the Vedanta Sutra begins, Janmadhyasya Yata, so Srimad Bhagavatam begins like that. Janmadhyasya Yata, fully explained explained that Janmashya that everything comes from him. The the Lord is explained. That's how the very first verse in Srimad Bhagavatam is Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudebaya Janmadyasya Yatonavya de Teratas Chatishya Bhikyanaswara. Right? The first verse, the first chapter, the first sloka begins Janmadyasya Yata. And Vedanta Sutra also begins that way. The Vedanta Sutra is understood from Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Vyasadeva compiled the Vedanta Sutra and Srila Vyasadeva compiled Srimad Bhagavatam. So it contains everything about the Absolute Truth. Everything there and contained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, if there's no other books except Srimad Bhagavatam, it won't be a problem because everything is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare uh, Krishna Maharaj. Aha. Hare Krishna Maharaj, don't open up. I'm sitting down here, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, yes. uh, I want to ask you, uh, so now we have a Srimad Bhagavadam, we have about Gita. So what is the uh, importance of this Vedanta Sutra, actually, Maharaj? How we should link this to our studies, everything, Maharaj? What is the importance of Vedanta Sutra? Yeah, Vedanta Sutra. Well, yes, it's important, uh, but we generally... We accept everything uh, on the basis of Srimad Bhagavatam. That what is explained in the Vedanta Sutra is mm -hmm. explained in much in a much easier manner in the Srimad Bhagavatam. You try to read the Vedanta Sutra, it's very heavy, very deeply philosophical. It's not like reading Srimad Bhagavatam. 
No Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, we could say, oh, it's quite philosophical, it's quite deep. But if you if you have a look at the Vedanta Sutra, you'll be shocked. You know, it, it's it's really quite uh quite difficult unless you're uh, uh very philosophically inclined, you know, you won't get a great deal of benefit. Any of the valuable points which are there. In the Vedanta Sutra, they've been taken and put into Prabhupada's purports. And Prabhupada will quote the different purports. He will quote, he will say in the Vedanta Sutra, it says like this. So particularly in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you'll see there's a lot of quotations from Vedanta Sutra. And particularly it comes in the, and for example, the Adi Lila chapter 7, where Lord Chaitanya is converting the Mayavadis to devotees because he's dealing, you know, Prabhupada's dealing with the, the commentaries of the Mayavadis. And the Mayavadis, the Shankaracharya's commentaries, especially Shankaracharya's commentaries on the Vedanta Sutra are very bewildering and misleading. So Prabhupada discusses them in quite detail, you can see in, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and particularly I see the seventh chapter where where Lord Chaitanya is preaching to the um, Prakashananda Saraswati and the and the other son, Mayavari sannyasis in Benares, and and the, there are many purports there which refer to the Vedanta Sutra. Now, Banu Swami is also translated. Uh, uh, the commentary of uh, B Baladeva Vijabhusan's commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. Okay. If you're interested, you know, you can get from Banu Swami his book on the Vedanta Sutra. It's okay. it's not easy reading, as I say, it's quite heavy reading. But if we go through Prabhupada's books, you'll find Prabhupada has given us a lot of references to Vedanta Sutra and all the important points. And even he's described even the structure of the Vedanta Sutra, the different chapters and what topics they're dealing, what topics they're covering. You'll find okay. it's all there in Prabhupada's book in Chaitanya Charitamrita particularly in Adi Leela there, chapter 7. Okay. Prabhupada explains about the Vedanta Sutra to us and explains how it's written and, and how it's divided, which different chapters are, what topics the different chapters are discussing. Okay. Thank you, so in this case, Maharaj, uh, we, uh, we can say that, okay, we just focus on the Srimad Bhagavadam, Bhagavad Gita is, is a sufficient enough ready, which is uh, the commentaries is come from uh, Vedanta Sutra, which is uh, you know, uh, written by Srila Prabhupada from there. You say, so that's as a basis. So we no need to focus on the Vedanta Sutra. We just know that right. the knowledge is enough ready. Is it like that, Maharaj? Right. Yeah, yes. Okay. We give importance to the, to the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. The Mayavadis, you see, they give importance to Vedanta Sutra. Mm -hmm. The Mayavadis, the impersonalists, followers of Shankaracharya, the Advaitavadas, you could call them Advaitavadas, the, mm -hmm. they will study the Vedanta Sutra. And particularly, they will study Shankaracharya's commentary on Vedanta Sutra. And they will speculate about it. They will discuss it and speculate of what is the meanings and so on. They will say, and like they, 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 they all come to so many different conclusions. What is right? <laughs> they, don't, they, they will argue, they will discuss about it in so many different ways. So Vedanta Sutra, uh, Shankaracharya, although Prabhupada quote, quoted him, him in the purport here in the lecture saying that he was a covered devotee, that Shankaracharya later on, uh, he, he gave importance to statements from Vedanta Sutra like Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma, that everything is Brahman, you see? Okay. And, 
prob <laughs> so everything is Brahman, yet, but there's also we know there's a supreme Brahman as well. You see, that point is not brought up in Shankaracharya's commentary. <laughs> The, the Mayavadis, the Mayavadis, they will just talk about Vedanta, Vedanta Sutra, and it, it happened one time. Uh, Ridayananda Maharaj, Ridayananda Maharaj, you know, he's a very scholarly devotee, disciple of Srila Prabhupada, and yeah. he has a PhD in Sanskrit from Harvard University. He did a PhD there, and uh, he was at a conference. And he was asked to give a talk, and so he was. The, the this one hin, Hindu professor was there, a professor of Hindu studies. He was a Brahmana, and uh, a smarter Brahmana, you know. And yeah. Ridayananda Maharaj was giving a talk, and in the beginning he was quoting the Bhagavad Gita. You see, so that when he was quoting Bhagavad Gita, this Hindu professor he didn't take him very seriously because they're smarter Brahmins, they only accept the, the Shruti. They won't accept the Bhagavad Gita. They, won't, they, they, they will only talk on the basis of the Shruti, the, Ved, the Vedas. So sometimes Prabhupada will put in the purport, he will say, there is a Vedic statement or there is a Vedic reference and he will quote from a particular Veda, one of the Upanishads, which is part of the Vedas. So that's that that kind of knowledge. Sometimes when you're talking to these smarter Brahmins, you have to give them quotes like that from the Vedas. So what do we give from the Vedas? We have, like here, Sri Ishopanishad. We have this Sri Ishopanishad. We can quote from the Ishopanishad. And we also have other quotes which, you know, Prabhupada has given us, which are there and also in Chaitanya Charitamrita. One of the important quotes which was which Sri Dainanda Maharaj gave when he was preaching there in front to this Hindu, this Hindu Sanskrit professor who was a smarter Brahman. In the beginning, Ridayananda Maharaj was just quoting Bhagavad Gita, but then he started to quote Vedic references, and he came up with the one verse, uh, Nityo Nityanam Chetananas Chetananam Anam Eko Bahunam Yovedati Kaman. And when Ridayananda Maharaj quoted this verse, then the professor just, oh, he just, oh, he was just so shocked and he was so, you know, he, he was completely defeated because this verse from the Vedas, which is a, one of the Upanishad verses, it, it, it describes that amongst all conscious beings, there's one supreme conscious being. Amongst all eternals, there's one supreme eternal being. And that one supreme Lord is providing the needs of all others. So it completely defeats the Mayavadi philosophy. You see, that because the Mayavadis, they're saying it's all one and, you know, there's no supreme and everything is one and you, 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 tatwamasi, you are that, you know. But when Ridayananda Maharaj quoted this verse, from the Vedas, oh, they were completely defeated by it. They couldn't. He could not respond. He had to. He had to see. So this is. It's a very important verse. You know. You you should make a note of it. And we often use it. And when we preach to these Brahmins, they may want, want to speak about Vedanta Sutra, and like that. And often they will they will give Shankaracharya's commentary. They'll quote Shankaracharya's stuff. But Shankaracharya has often its own Mayavadi philosophy, you see. So you have to you have to be able to defeat them with it by quoting Vedas. That there are Vedic references to establish that there is a supreme Lord. Yes, Prabhupada was quoting Brahma Samhita. He was saying very difficult to know Krishna from the Vedas. 
Vedeshu Durlabam, Adurlabam Atma Bhakto. Right? The Brahma Samhita says like that. Advaita Machuta Manadi Manantarupam Adyam Purana Purusham Yavano Vanamcha Vedeshu Durlabam Adurlabam Atma Bhakto. Govinda Madi Pursham Tamaham Bajamin. That there's, uh, well, Lord Brahma is saying, he's describing the nature of the Supreme Lord, uh, who is a, a, a dwait, he's one without a second, Achutam, Advaitam Achutam, Anadim, without, without beginning. Uh, Anadim Anantarupam he has many forms, his forms are endless. Such a person must know, in fact, the greatest of all, who is unbodied, eternally existing, unborn, primeval. Uh, he, he is inaccessible by the Vedas but he is attainable only by unalloyed devotion of the soul. So Lord Brahma said, like, to know Lord Krishna from the Vedas is very difficult. But if you have the devotee to guide us, then you can know. Then it becomes easy to know. It's easy to know the Lord with the help of a devotee. But if you just try to do it by your own research, then it's very difficult. Prabhupada is making that point here in his lecture. That if you go by the by the inductive process, the ascending process, then you know, pulling yourself up, very difficult, very difficult to come to know the absolute truth. But if you t take the help of the spiritual teacher, you hear from the guru, we hear from the acharyas, the knowledge coming down, the deductive process, that is a way to understand the Lord. And Prabhupada was giving the example. You want to know who is your father? You got the end, you go to every man, you 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 work hard, you have to go around for years and years, you may never meet your father. But if you go to the mother, mother can immediately say who is the father. So we want to understand the Lord, we can understand the Lord very easily if we take the right process with the help of the devotee and the, the spiritual teachers, the acharya. Right? Uh, Hare Krishna okay. Maharaj. Yes. Just one thing I need to clarify that this two uh, system of knowledge, inductive and deduct deductive, inductive is ascending and deductive is descending. Is it so? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Inductive is ascending, and deductive is descending. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. We take the deductive process, right? Uh huh. Any other questions here? Guru Maharaj. So just. Yes. Guru Dev, uh, what is the difference between uh, two points? Uh, to make mistakes and to be in illusion. Uh, because uh, when we are in illusion, we are, will make mistakes uh, naturally, automatically. Well, illusion is to think you are something. You're thinking, I am this. You're thinking, I am a Russian. You're thinking, I am a woman. You're thinking, I am a student. Like that, you're thinking, this is, you know, this, this is all, you know, the, the thinking of the mind, right? The illusion, right? But who actually, who are you? 
You know, you are a spirit soul. You are a servant of Krishna, right? So this, is, so illusion is thinking like that. You could say it's a mistake. No, mistake is you do something wrong, or you say something wrong. You got it wrong, right? We're trying to remember. Sometimes we try to remember a person, and and we think of some other person. We got it wrong. You make a mistake. Maybe you. You 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 want to quote a verse and you get the wrong verse. You're trying to quote Shastra, but you come up with the wrong verse from this. So making a mistake is different from illusion, right? You understand? Yes, and thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Now it's clear. Thank you. Okay, so we had four defects, and we had. Uh, we had also three sources of knowledge, Prakjaksha, Anuman, and Sabja, Shabda. We had two processes of receiving the knowledge, ascending and descending. We heard quite a bit about Shankaracharya <laughs> and the Vaishnava Acharyas. Shankaracharya, they also accept the Vedas. You see, people who don't accept the Vedas, they're atheists. Just like Buddhists, they're atheists. They don't accept the Vedas. They reject the scriptures. And Shankaracharya, in some way, their presentation, the impersonalists, they're presenting the Veda, they accept the Vedic knowledge, but they accept it in their own way, of course. They're accepting that if ultimately there's only the oneness, and we can all become one with the Supreme. And we, they say, Tatvamasi, you are that. In other words, they they all want to become God. So if everyone can become God, then there's no meaning to God anymore. So it's also an atheistic approach to although they may use the Vedas, they they present them in that atheistic manner. And there are, there are uh, uh, oh, there's about, uh, supposed to be 108 Upanishads. And most of the Upanishads, well, there's some of the Upanishads are important. And the only one which is commented on, which is presented, is this Sri Ishopanishad. And it's presented, Prabhupada presents it because we often have to preach to people who are they will they will only accept the Vedas and they won't accept Bhagavad Gita because Bhagavad Gita and Srimad those are all not Vedic texts. In their in their line, in their vision, they don't see the Bhagavad Gita as being a Vedic text. Of course we accept it as a Vedic text, but they don't. Rupa Goswami, he has given us, he said Shruti Smriti Puranadi Panchara Triki Vidimbinam Aikantiki Harir Bhakti Utpata Yaiva Kaupate. The devotional service should be performed according to the Shruti, the Smriti, the Puranas, the Itihasyas. And if it's not done according to these scriptures, then it is simply a disturbance to society. So he's, he's given that list, he's mentioned all these different scriptures. He said, these scriptures, these scriptures are what make up 
the real body of devotional service. We are guided by the scriptures. And the scriptures are not only the Shruti, but also the Smriti and the Puranas. And uh, some of the Acharyas, they say that the Smriti is more important than the Shruti because the Smriti is giving the explanation of the this, of this Shruti. If you read the Shruti from the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has said about the Shruti, he said, uh, rise above the Vedas. Veda is Veda is charged, I forget the verse now, but the Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, rise above the Vedas, o Arjuna. The Vedas uh, are subject matter. Trigunya Vishaya Veda. This is the verse in Bhagavad Gita. Trigunya Vishaya Veda, nice Trigunya Babarjuna. Nirvan Vonichasadvasto, like that. Krishna said, rise above the, the Vedic knowledge is dealing with the three modes of material nature. Rise above the modes, o Arjuna. Be transcendental to all of them. So the, the Vedas generally deal with the three modes of material nature. That it, it's only very small portions of the Vedas are dealing with transcendental knowledge, real transcendental knowledge. Most of the Vedas the, four, the original Vedic texts are rituals, different rituals which they will perform. How to live in the world. The Vedas are like the handbook for living in the material world. We have a handbook. Just like you purchase some new machine, you get, a machine, you get some handbook with it. How to maintain it, how to keep it, how to use it, how to service it. So the Vedas direct us how to live in this material world, how to work and how to achieve the goal of life in this world. The Vedas give us directions for work, how to what activities should be performed for success materially and spiritually. But there's a, it, it's often the emphasis is on the material and not just on the spiritual. So like this, the Vedic knowledge uh, attracts people. There was one famous German scholar, Sanskrit scholar, Max Muller. He came to India and he translated the Vedas all about the different rituals which are done described in the Vedas. Okay, any other question? Anybody else had any question? Um, if there's no question, then we'll finish here tonight. Okay, so we'll be back on Friday and we'll go on to the invocation. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you. 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 Thank you.